My name is Robert Legato, and my title in the film is Visual Effects Supervisor and Second Unit Director. Ready, and action. What a visual effects supervisor generally does is you look through the script and find areas that generally cannot be filmed in a normal manner, that's too expensive, too dangerous. Uh, in our case, the planes don't exist anymore, they're too expensive to, to remake them. These stunts or things that are done are too dangerous, people might get killed, like in the original Hells Angels, three pilots got killed. So you look through those opportunities essentially, and then you come up with ways and means of sort of cost effectively trying to produce it uh, and get the same images on film that everybody really wants. Uh, for me also not just do the visual effects but also do the second unit directing as well where I could pick and choose which moments better lent themselves to live action and which moments better lent themselves to an effect and sometimes you change them organically right on the spot. So let, let's rehearse one. Okay and action. Okay, I'm on that propeller then I'm gonna go for this boom in the middle here then back to this propeller and now I gotta speed up because it's gonna take off. In this particular shot, it's almost impossible to actually shoot that for real. You couldn't shoot a real plane doing that, and we couldn't shoot a miniature plane like I would have liked to uh, that way and actually have it move on a real runway and all that. So this, we decided, had to become a computer-generated shot basically from scratch. And then we added all the various things in, in that that make it look realistic. Sun flares, the way the camera shakes, all the sort of mistakes that you almost try to get rid of when you shoot on the day, but in our case, you actually want to keep them because it makes the shot look that much more realistic. And you have to shoot it literally in, in elements, even in a computer. You have to have the key light pass, and you have to have the, the runway, and that has to be built and matte painted together. And all these various elements have to come together and, and slowly get built step by step and later in a composite. They're all put together with some degree of fluency to make it all feel like it could be a realistic shot. To recreate Hell's Angels, what we had to do is we studied the actual film of Hell's Angels and we had to basically mimic the clouds, mimic the landscape, everything that would have appeared in that film because ultimately it appears in Grauman's Chinese Theater when they screen the movie and it appears in other scenes in the, in the film. So we had to exactly duplicate it. We found a, a great landscape in Catalina, so we shot a background plate in Catalina. Then we uh, created a computer generated clouds and they were layered one piece on top of another piece until they matched essentially the film itself, the original 1927 film. And then uh, we had to shoot Leo uh, on green screen on a stage, mimicking what a biplane would do and how it would fly and the type of shot that we, we came up with. And then to create the illusion that the plane is real, we actually, uh, it's created in computer uh, generated or CGI. And it's basically you start with a wireframe and the wireframe then gets textured with what the uh, exterior of the plane or the skin of the plane looks like, and then it gets lit. And then you do a lighting pass, which is a key light pass. Then you do a fill light pass. And then you basically composite all of that with Leo inside it against the background plate, which we is the mountains that we shot in Catalina. And then, of course, the sky and the clouds that uh, were created in the computer. And then all of those elements are hopefully seamlessly put together, so you, you're convinced that another biplane is photographing Leo, photographing uh, the, the action scene from uh, the dogfight in Hell's Angels. To create uh, where the Spruce Goose, or actually called the Hercules, uh, actually took off from in Long Beach, 1947 version of Long Beach, we uh, shot um, the plane outdoors against uh, natural sunlight with a natural sky. We then added computer-generated water, and then uh, we added in the deep background basically the, uh, the derricks and the uh, various machinery of the day that actually were uh, available in 1947 in Long Beach. And everything was layered together, and we created basically this Long Beach world that we could photograph any area we wanted to to put the Hercules flying uh, exactly the way it flew back in, the, in, in 47 when it flew for the first time. And because the plane wasn't actually in water, it was actually in computer-generated water, we had to create the spray and the water interaction and the reflections of the plane within the water. All that has to be added later and it has to be uh, synthetically created to make it look like it's the real thing, to make it look like there's real interaction, real weight from the plane. 
normally uh, models are generally shot indoors, uh, motion control models. In this particular case, we decided for two reasons to shoot it outdoors. One of them is it's very realistic because it's lit by the sun, the sky reflection is the real sky reflection, and it's the, the fill light is correct. Everything is exactly the way it would be if it were really outdoors, and so we literally photographed it outdoors. If you shot it in, on the stage, you'd have to mimic every piece of reflection, the sky reflection, all those various things that make up something that your eye believes to be real all has to be artificially put in. Very difficult with a reflective plane. So the easiest case and also the best looking case was to actually physically take this model outdoors and just shoot it like it really would have been there. They have to look a little more profile. They look like they're looking away from me. They don't look like they're looking towards me. Okay. For that particular sequence, we also shot a radio control plane that actually flew from the water in Long Beach, exactly the where, where the Spruce Goose actually, or the Hercules actually took off from. And because that was so realistic, because it's actually a real plane, it's actually flying, we had a, the, uh, a shot of the uh, cameraman in the foreground, just like in the documentary footage, following the uh, Hercules on its maiden voyage. That created sort of a, a, a step that we had to match to. Every, every model shot had to match at least the quality of something that looked like it was realistically shot outdoors. So it became a benchmark for us. The Hollywood Boulevard uh, shot was actually inspired by, we actually got actual uh, footage from the Hells Angels premiere uh, in the day, so we knew exactly what it looked like. We decided to shoot a model and have the same uh, searchlights going back and forth and mimic exactly what was done back, back then. Uh, we, uh, Dante had built this beautiful uh, a partial set of Grauman's Chinese Theater in Montreal, and we only had about three or four hundred extras, and we literally painted it with extras. We moved them from one spot to the next until we filled up the foreground, then we photographed a, a model, which is about 35 to 40 feet of miniature buildings, and we shot it in smoke, and we had little miniature searchlights that were waving back and forth, and miniature cars and miniature banners and all the various things that make that shot look realistic. Layered them all together, put all the people together, split screen all the people together, so now it looks like it's a very full Hollywood Boulevard street mimicking what was done back then. And then we added the extra bit, which was the planes, the biplanes that were flying overhead. There wasn't any stock footage of that because they couldn't photograph planes at night flying because they just didn't have an exposure for it, but we could. So we added those planes flying in and Marty wanted to add one other little grace note that he assumed, or maybe it was actually factual, that they would spray red, white, and blue um, smoke out of the back of the biplanes as part of the celebration for the film. And we added all that together and then created a move where we would tilt down with the planes and reveal this vast production. There was a particular scene that we uh, needed Leo to actually be inserted over the real Howard Hughes in the newsreel footage. And uh, I was setting it up so I could tell him beat by beat exactly what he had to do. And before I got a chance to tell him, he saw the monitor and mimicked the exact mo movements of Howard Hughes, just, just beat for beat. And I basically didn't have to tell him anything. And he said, boy, this is going to be hard. And before I knew it, he, he actually became him for that short little moment. And when I put the shot together, it was remarkable. It was almost eerie that he became Howard Hughes. Once I inserted him into the scene, you almost can't tell him apart. Even though there's a tremendous artifice and green screen, he's sitting on an apple box instead of in a car driving down the middle of uh, Manhattan. He is making you believe that that's what he's doing. And as soon as you remove everything else around it and put him in the right scene, he, he emotionally, as an actor, is in that moment. And that's really great. I didn't have to do anything. Okay, no time of one hour and 45 minutes to elapse. So set course for zero nine. Give me zero. 10 more minutes, roger that. Negative, Howard, bring her home. Okay. Uh, the idea behind the XF-11 crash is because it really happened and because it was really terrifying and really sort of spectacular in its own way, we chose not to film it in a way uh, that was sort of over-dramatizing it. It's basically make it incredibly simple so that all you get from it when you watch it is the, what it might be like to be in the middle of that. So this particular miniature represents 805 uh, Linden, North Linden, where actually, uh, and it's patterned and it looks just like the real house, where Howard Hughes actually crashed into it. And apparently what happened, there's one more house over there, which is 803, that uh, caused him to steer his plane into this. He was actually heading for the golf course, which was over this direction. I'm gonna drop for the Wilshire Country Club, not tall, you read me? Wilshire Country Club, copy that. So he ended up now steering this way instead of that way, and his wing would go through this area right in here and is gonna rip it totally up. When it reaches about this point here, the engine's gonna flip over, gonna cause him to spin out of control, hit a couple telephone poles, explosions. Anytime the wing gets hit, it's where all the gasoline is kept. That's gonna, that's gonna blow and he's gonna land 
basically uh, between this, uh, where there's an alleyway between this and another house across the way. And when we're done with our destruction phase, which is what we uh, prevised, uh, it then cuts to the set that Dante is going to build, which is patterned, which is unusual after the model. Usually we pattern the models after the live action, but in this particular case, because we had built these plans and everything like that, we uh, we're, he's now building the house based on our specs because of how we're going to destroy it and all that. And we chose that we would actually shoot outdoors so that you can take advantage of the sunlight and take advantage of background trees that are full size. And you look through the camera, it looks about right to you. Well, the camera is kind of limited in, in how many things it can possibly do. And so we decided to shoot and dramatize each moment of the crash in detail form so that the sum total that you believe what happened really happened. That he hit this one house, sliced through the roof, twisted the plane around, hit a telephone pole. He was thrown like a rag doll inside. And instead of making these crazy wild sort of CG virtual camera shots, we didn't do any of those things. It's like if you were there on the day and you had five cameras to photograph a real event and you set them up and shot them the best way you could, that's what you'd see. But what you photographed was spectacular in its own right. The idea behind what we're trying to do, especially in this film and films like it, where it's not really a special effects film, it's that it's actually trying to convince you that what you're seeing is real. And if you do your job well enough, no one should n notice because you really are part of the fabric of making the movie and you don't want to be have undue attention like any other portion which might take you out of the film. You want to basically firmly immerse your shots and your, your sequences and your things into the film so it looks like Martin Scorsese uh, uh, directed it and Bob Richardson shot it and Dante Ferretti art directed it and all the way down the line so there's no separation between their work and, and visual effects work.